I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus name and I pray that tonight the Lord will open the eyes of our understanding and this passage very important strategic passage in the Bible in the Word of God you'll understand in Jesus name let's pray together father we thank you for our Bible study thank you for those who have been coming over the years and are still faithful coming today we pray Lord your grant everyone perfect understanding in Jesus name and for friends and neighbors brothers and sisters who are joining us for the first time today we pray Lord you get them into the real world in Jesus name let this word be of benefit and profit to everyone bless our leaders our pastors our workers our members everyone in Jesus name keep us awake we will not sleep we will not doze will get your word into us and great will be the peace and the power of the word in every life tonight in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray another amen before you sit down there God bless you we're coming to the gospel according to St. John and we're read with learning from chapter 10 today today we're looking at chapter 10 verses 1 through to 10 it says verily verily i say unto you he that entereth not in by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way the same as a thief and a robber but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep You'll notice as we read on that he mentions the shepherd, he mentions the sheep, and so we're talking about and we're learning about the shepherd and the sheep tonight. In verse 3, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. In verse 4, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable, this illustration, and this uh, picture language spake Jesus Christ unto them, that is, unto the Jews, unto the people that were around him. But they understood not what things they were which is speak unto them then said jesus unto them again it's not going to make it clear to them it it to them verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep all that were all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them i am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy i am come that they might have life life is coming to us i said life is coming to you i am come that they might have life and that they might have it tell me out aloud more abundantly as we look at these verses tonight we're studying believing and following the true shepherd believing and following the true shepherd the heavenly father god almighty had promised his people shepherds if you go back to the old testament actually the lord promised them he was going to send them shepherds that he is leaders that will lead them into the truth of god he was going to give them people that will feed them with the word of god and eventually as you open the new testament who are the people we meet we meet the pharisees we meet the pharisees and the sadducees the people that profess to be the shepherds and to be the teachers and to be the preachers and the proclaimers of the truth of the word of god but then they didn't act like shepherds at all 
because they didn't fit into the promise that the Lord had given to his own people. They were not really caring for the spiritual welfare of the people. They were oppressive. And you remember as we studied in chapter 9, even the one that was trying to come to the shepherd, to the Lord Jesus Christ, they cast him out of the synagogue. They were not feeding the people with the word of God. As you look at Jeremiah chapter 23, you see the promise that the Almighty God had given and the expectation of the people. And this is the same expectation we have and the same promise the Lord has given unto us. Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're reading here from verse 4. It tells us in verse 4, it says, And I will set up shepherds, uh, I will set up shepherds, the plural, over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. You understand the promise of the Lord, the prophecy that we have read there? You understand what the Lord wanted for the children of Israel and what he wants for the rest of the world. He wanted to give teachers of the word, leaders in the way, preachers that will bring them to the fullness of the provision of the Lord so that they will be fed, so that they will fear no more, so that they will not be dismayed and so that they will not be lacking in anything what do we find as you look at this promise and you compare with the ministry of the pharisees and the sadducees what eventually happened isaiah chapter 56 isaiah chapter 56 i'm reading from verse 10 is what men are blind look at the pharisees jesus said if the blind lead the blind both of them will fall into the ditch it says is what men are blind they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs that cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Look at verse 11, yea, they are greedy dogs that can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Shepherds that cannot understand. They didn't understand the Messiah had come. They didn't understand Christ had come. They didn't understand this the way walking therein. They didn't understand the provision that Jesus Christ has brought. Even though John pointed it out and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, we take it away the sin of the world. Yet it says, These shepherds cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone to his own gain from his own quarter. And what was the consequence of that? Look at Jeremiah chapter 50. And we're reading from verse 6. The consequence of the fact that those Pharisees and those Sadducees didn't really understand that Jesus Christ had come to save the people and to bring the people back to the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 6, my people have been lost sheep. That's the result when the shepherds do not know the way. That's the result when the shepherds cannot see. That's the result when the shepherds do not know their duty, their responsibility, and their ministry, and they did not know how to carry it out. It says, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. You see that? Those Pharisees, and those Sadducees, those leaders and teachers of people, they cause them to go astray. They have taunted them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. They even forgot about heaven. They forgot about the promise of God. They forgot that Canaan land was a picture of heaven. And if he took them to the Canaan land, he was about to take them to heaven. They forgot their resting place because they didn't actually follow the will of the Lord. Now we come to the New Testament and we're looking at Matthew chapter 9. Jesus had now come and Jesus saw the people. He'd be going about ministering to the people and now look at the result over here as he saw them as he looked at them and saw their condition their predicament in Matthew chapter 9 reading there from verse 36 but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having tell me 
no shepherd. Although the people were there, where are your shepherds? Where are your teachers? Where are your leaders? Where are the leaders of today? And where are the people appointed by God? God has appointed us to take you somewhere. But Jesus looked at them. Those people were not getting the knowledge of the word of God. They were not seeing the way of salvation. And they were not seeing the provision of God for them. And when Jesus saw them, he said, look at these. They were fainting. There was no nourishment for them. There was no nutrient for them. And there was no help for them spiritually. And Jesus said they were like sheep without a shepherd. The people became lost sheep. That's what we read in Jeremiah. What does that mean? They no more knew the way to the sheepfold. They no more knew the way to security. They no more knew the way to salvation. They became helpless they were unfed, they were exposed to danger. You see, as they were lost everywhere, Satan could come and grab them. Evil spirits could torment them. Evil powers could torment them because they were like people with no shepherd and they were being deceived and destroyed. Those Pharisees who claimed to be leaders and those uh, people that claimed to be their shepherds, they were deceiving them and they were being destroyed. They groped in darkness until they became blind. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter, look at this. Jesus Christ was talking about the leaders and those who are being led. He was talking about their so-called shepherd and also he was talking about those people that were being led by them, that is the sheep. And the Lord was telling them that, you know, these people in Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 14, it says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. The leaders were blind, the followers were blind, the shepherds were blind, and the sheep were blind. These were people that were lost, and therefore, there was so much in darkness, they groped in darkness, and the darkness blinded their eyes. Not only that, they were sick, they were weak, they were oppressed, and they were enslaved. They even lost the desire to know the truth. As we look at uh, John chapter 9, where we studied already, they even lost the desire to know the truth. And when those parents of uh, the man that was born blind, when they came and the Pharisees said, Is this your son? Yes, that's our son. How, how did he get at the side? They said, we don't know his of age. Ask him. They didn't want to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says over here that they forgot their resting place. Even to get to heaven, the desire was no more there. But thank God, Jesus, the true shepherd, has come. Jesus, the Savior, has come. And he has come to us today. He'll meet your need. He'll solve your problem. He'll save your soul. He'll purify your life. And whatever you need, because you see, that true shepherd is to bring us to the provision of the Lord so that we will not lack anything. No lack in your life from today. As we come more into the Savior, more into the shepherd, it will satisfy and meet all the needs of your life in Jesus' name. The study today, believing and following the true shepherd. Believing, Lord, I believe. I said, Lord, I believe. Believing and following, I will follow. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though all oppose me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me, I will follow. Somebody there say, I will follow Jesus. You will follow in Jesus' name. We're dividing the passage we have read. That is John chapter 10. We're dividing into three parts. Number one, the deception and deadliness of trespassing shepherds. The deception and deadliness of trespassing shepherds. Number two, the description and distinctiveness of the true shepherd. That's Jesus Christ, distinct. That's Jesus Christ unique. That's Jesus Christ different. The description and the distinctiveness of the true shepherd. Number three, the decision and the devotedness 
of trust of the trusting sheep. The sheep that comes to Christ. The sheep that comes to the shepherd. He knows Jesus as Savior. He knows Jesus as the final sacrifice. He knows Jesus at the provision of the Father, the atonement for all our sins. And then he trusts in him. He depends on him. He leans on him. He believes in him. The decision and the devotedness of the trusting sheep. Number one. What's your number one over there? I can't hear church. The deception and the deadliness of transgressing shepherds. Let's look at them. This is describing the people that have come and they pose to be the preachers and they pose to be the shepherds and they pose to be the leaders of the people and yet they were false. Yet they were sinful. Yet they didn't know the way and they couldn't point out the way. Let's look at some of the verses that talk about them. We're looking at chapter 10 and we're looking at verse 1. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not in by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. You see what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying? There were some people that came. They were even announcing themselves. They were the messiahs. They were the saviors. They were the people to deliver them from darkness and from ignorance and from their sins. And Jesus said they didn't come through the door. What does that mean? They didn't have the key to come through the door. What does that mean? They didn't come through the right way. They were not appointed. They were not sent by the Almighty God. They were not anointed to do that. It was not their place. And so they knew they couldn't come in the right way through the door. And they came like like thieves and he came through the window and he came some other way and Jesus said all those people that were imposing themselves on the nation of Israel and they were claiming to be the Messiah claiming to be the Christ he said they were thieves and they were robbers look at verse 5 a stranger will they not follow they were strange strange preaching strange action Strange behavior, strange life. Somebody came into the temple and somebody came to worship God and the Jesus Christ helped him and the power of God delivered him from blindness that was born with and they cast him out of the synagogue, out of the sanctuary. They won't allow him to worship God. Strange. And it says a stranger will they not follow but they will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. Look at verse 6. This parable speaks Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. Can you imagine? He spoke to them something simple, something very straightforward, something the Old Testament had said over and over again about the shepherd that will come and then will feed the people, will tend the people, will protect the people, and will give them satisfaction with supernatural power from heaven. And it says, they didn't understand what Jesus Christ was saying. Look at verse 8. All that ever came before me. What does that mean? All that ever came before me. It's not talking of Moses. God sent Moses. It's not talking of Joshua. God sent Joshua. It's not talking of Elijah. Elisha. God sent them. It's not talking about David. God sent him. It's not talking about the people who were faithful who are speaking the word of God. He was talking about the people that were professing themselves to be the Messiah and to be the Christ and to be their Redeemer. He said all those people, they came before me. He wasn't talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist came before him. But John the Baptist said the right thing. He pointed the way to them. Behold, the Son of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was talking of the people that imposed themselves to on over the people and they didn't have the right to do that all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers but thank God the sheep did not hear them the sheep did not hear them I will not follow a stranger 
I'll not follow strange voices. I'll not follow those the false prophets and false, false shepherds. Because if you're real sheep indeed, you'll not follow those people. Look at verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Well, ultimately, I was talking about Satan, the one that energized them, the one that empowered them, the one that motivated them, the one that was stirring them up to do what they were doing. He said, That's the thief. And the nature of Satan is in them. That's why he told them, You have your father, the devil, and the works of your father, ye you will do. Because he came to steal, he came to kill, and he came to destroy. The deception and the deadliness of transgressing shepherds. And Lord Jesus Christ painted a clear picture of the false shepherds. He called them transgressing leaders. They were misleading guides. They said, well, guide you to the right way. They didn't know the place they were going themselves. They didn't know the way to get to heaven. And yet they wanted to guide the people. They were self-appointed messiahs. Self-appointed messiahs. The Lord had not appointed them. They were unconverted, unsaved teachers. How can the blind make your eyes to see? How can the unconverted make you to be converted? How can the unsaved get you to real salvation? They were false prophets. They were sinning ministers. They have not come through the door. Because God has not sent them. The right of entrance was not being given to them. It's a person that is authorized like Jesus Christ. Anointed like Jesus Christ. Appointed like Jesus Christ. The Father sending him. is the one that has the key. It's the one that has the authority. And the portal opens to him. But these ones that didn't have the right. These ones that didn't have the key. And this one that didn't not to enter or just self-appointed messiahs and they were deceivers and thieves and robbers and destroyers of souls they were servants and, and messengers of satan they may mention god you know everybody mentions god even the people on the other side of the face in religion they mention god they may mention salvation salvation when a Pharisee mentions salvation, it's not talking about salvation coming from Calvary. It's talking about a kind of salvation you try to get by yourself, by paying all the temple deals and all the sanctuary um, rules that they laid upon you. They may mention love. When they mention love, what they mean by their love is to love your friends and love your family, love your wife, and then hate all the other people. They may mention grace, but they don't understand about that grace. They may even mention mention heaven but they do not know to get to that heaven they'll mention righteousness but it's a kind of depleted righteousness because jesus said except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of scribes and the pharisees ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of god they may mention power but it's not power over sin they may mention power it's not power over satan they may mention power it's not power over sickness they may mention power is just you know the temple power the temple authority is the temple to cast them is the power to cast them out of the temple out of the sanctuary that's what they mean those Pharisees were proud those Pharisees were converted those Pharisees were incorrigible they were incorrigible sinners sinning shepherds sinning ministers are dangerous and deadly. Uh, let's look at them. This is not the first time they are even appearing. Come to the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. And let's see a little view of them as they appeared before and they still continued. Even in the New Testament time, Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors, and that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. And here the Lord was talking about those same shepherds. He was talking about those prophets. He was talking about them, those who pose uh, to be teachers and pastors over them. He said, woe unto them. Look at verse 16. In verse 16 it says, Thus says the Lord of hearken not unto the words of the prophets. 
that prophesy unto you. They make you vain and they speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. That, that's the kind of shepherd they were at that time. They were not speaking from the mouth of the Lord. They were not speaking from the oracles of God. They were not speaking the might of God to the people. Look at verse 17. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have a peace. Smooth talk. Wonderful talk. They said, all the people that were fighting against God, they are happy. And they say to everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. What's the characteristic of a false prophet, a false shepherd? They say what the people want to hear. They do not say what the people need to hear. A sinner needs to repent. They won't talk about that. If a person who is idol worshiper needs to come up out of idol worship, they won't talk about that. A person that is fighting against God needs to drop all the weapons of war and bow before the Lord and say, Lord, I surrender, I submit, and I come to the Lord in total repentance. They wouldn't do that. Look at verse 21. I have not said these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. That's why Jesus so said they didn't come through the door they came over the window and over the wall and he says he said they are robbers and they are thieves look at verse 32 in verse 32 behold i'm against them that prophesy false dreams says the lord and do tell them and cause my people to hear they cause my people to go astray by their lies Lies in religion, hypocrisy in religion, falsehood in religion. They will not show the real way of repentance and the way of righteousness and the way of knowing the Lord. It says by the lightness, by the frivolity, by the superficiality, it says by the lightness, they were not witty. They need to have the authority of the word. They need to have the authority of the spirit. And you can tell when a leader, when a so-called pastor, when a so-called preacher, when a so-called uh, so prophet will be joking and jesting, and then will be taking the word of God as if it's a light scene. He'll talk about hell. He'll be laughing. He'll talk about heaven. He'll not be serious. He says they're light. He says they're frivolous. He says you cannot depend upon them. He says by the lightness yet I sent them not and commanded and commanded them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit this people at all says the Lord you see those false prophets they will not be of any benefit to you and they will not profit you why because the Lord has not sent them they don't know what it takes they don't have what it takes they don't have salvation they don't have the way of life. They don't have sound doctrine. They don't know the way how to get to heaven. And so they will not be of any profit to you. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And I'm reading here from verse 15. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you with sheep's clothing. They have smooth talk. They have nice look. And they have, they've learned some kind of a language in which they're going to speak. And then they try to capture the people, captivate the minds of the people with their lies. And it says in that verse 15, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Look at their character. Look at their character. You know, somebody who says, a preacher, and they are polygamists, and they have four wives, and five wives, and seven wives. And somebody who says, is, you know, following the Lord. And he mentions Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And then you go to get uh, something somewhere and bury an animal in the sanctuary where they are. You see, so that, you know, they say that all the worms that will come out of uh, that uh, buried animal will draw people. People will be coming. It's all deception. And they're worshipping idols. They're not following after the Lord. Thank God you are not like that. I said, thank God you are not like that. Jesus said, do not do men, do men gather graves of thorns, of figs, of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. 
a good tree if you're really born again if you're a real child of god if you're really following the lord you will not bring forth a bad fruit but it says neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down hewn down and cast into where and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them somebody said but you know I, I know some people that perform miracles and they don't have the, they don't preach salvation they don't preach repentance they just say come and then if uh, you're sick you have headache once they lay hands on you all the headache will vanish away and they perform great great wonders and they never talk about holiness how about those uh, people after all God is so good whether they are holy or they are not holy he gives gives them a, this a miracle walking power look at verse 21 not everyone that says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father in heaven and how can you do the will of god in heaven if you are not born again if you are not sanctified how can you do the will of God in heaven if you don't even know that we you don't know the doctrine you don't know the teaching of the word of God all those people that are just running about they, you know throw this and lay hands on people and you know give them photograph and give them clothes and whatever and they say they are performing miracle if you don't know the will of God the word of God you cannot do the will of God and the word of God and if that is the case if you die we will cry for you look at verse 22 many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out many devils and in thy name have done tell me many wonderful works then will i profess unto them that time it will be too late to repent that time it will be too late to come back and make a mess because he's talking now about the judgment day of the people that have been going on miracle miracle signs and wonders ministry and noise and here and there and there's no salvation and there's no sanctification and there's no holiness and there's no doing the will of God it says then when I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me tell me ye that work iniquity i pray that will not be your lord in jesus name but how about that how did that happen we're looking at second corinthians chapter 11. second corinthians chapter 11 and i'm reading here from verse 13. second corinthians chapter 11 we're reading from verse 13 so that you understand it's not everybody that carries bible that's the real shepherd it's not everybody that mentions the name of jesus that is the real shepherd it's not everybody that has a church an assembly a fellowship a sanctuary a temple that is a real man of god look at this now second corinthians chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 13 it says uh, from chapter 11 verse 13 but such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ they give themselves titles they give themselves names and it says they transform themselves the heavenly father has not transformed them christ has not transformed them and the power of grace working the life of a man of a woman has not transformed them they transform themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed it will watch it an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their whose end shall be according to their according to their works i pray you will not be in that category you will not be in the assembly and you will not follow a false prophet that will lead you into the ditch in Jesus' name. I thought she really say, Amen. Amen. Now we're coming to point number two. In point number two, the description and the distinctiveness of the true shepherd. The distinction and the, and the distinctiveness of uh, description and distinctiveness of the true shepherd. Here we come now to Jesus Christ. Somebody mentioned the name Jesus. Jesus. 
Shout it out. Says my Savior. Says my Shepherd. Says my sufficiency. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And when this shepherd comes to your life, if he has not come before he comes today, every need, every lack of your life, it will supply in Jesus' name. And if he had come before, I pray that today, today, it will come in a greater way in your life, and every need and every lack of your life, it will supply in Jesus' name. And we're coming now to this description and the distinctiveness of the true shepherd. We're coming to chapter 10 of John. Chapter 10 of John. We're looking at verse 2. But she that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He came majestically. And he came authoritatively. He came assuredly. He came with assurance and certainty. And he entered by the door. And he started calling them, follow me, and follow me, and follow me. And you could tell, you could see the ring of authority. You could see the power, the clarity of his authority. Because he came as the shepherd of the sheep. Look at verse 3. To him the porter openeth. To him the porter openeth. Look up here for a moment. You know, the story Jesus Christ was telling them, this Bible was telling them, was telling them what they were familiar with in those days. You see, many of the children of Israel, they were shepherds. And then they had sheep that they will lead and guide. And then in the night when they come, there's a place they call a sheepfold. It's a very large compound. And you have walls around that compound, and you have just a dome. And through that door, all those shepherds will deposit all their sheep. And in the morning when they come, the porter recognizes them. And he opens to them, and they take their sheep out for watering. And Jesus Christ was saying, the Holy Ghost is the porter. He recognizes me. And when I come into the sheepfold and I call this one, come, he follows me, come, he follows me. That's what he was saying. Because the true shepherd, look at the verse 3 again. To him the Holy Ghost opens. To him the potter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by, tell me, by name. Do you remember? Look up here. You remember? He was in Jericho. And then he was going. And there was one man that climbed up the sycamore tree. What's his name again? Zacchaeus. And when Jesus got there, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, he sheep. He was calling for salvation. Because he came to call the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He called him by name. He said, Zacchaeus, come down because today I must abide in your house. And Jesus has been calling people. Jesus has been calling them one by one. And thank God he called me. I said, thank God he called me. I said, thank God he called me. I can't see the people he called. He called you and you answered. I said, he called you and you answered. He called them by name, and then he goes to say and leadeth them out. He's the one who leads us out of darkness. He leads us out of our sin. He leads us out of our poverty. He leads us out of all the evil that followed us until the time he called. And he says in verse 4, And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. They follow him. That's the, that, that's the characteristic and the mark of the real sheep. They follow the Lord. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, he tells us once again about himself. He said, Then said Jesus to them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. He says, if you're going to come into the kingdom, there is a door, and Jesus is that door. If you're going to come into peace, there is a door, and Jesus is that door. If you're going to come to the salvation of the Lord, there's a door, because that kingdom has salvation there, there's a door. And the door is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You want to come to deeper experiences in the Lord, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, and the sufficient provided from Calvary Jesus is the door it says I am the door of the sheep look at uh, verse 9 there in verse 9 I am the door by me by me by me if any man enter in he shall be saved 
by me if any man enter in he shall be saved there's no other way to salvation is Jesus Christ and there's no other savior among men under heaven there's no other name by which we can be saved the name is Jesus that's why it says if any man enter in he shall be saved and he shall go in and out that means there'll be freedom that means there'll be liberty all the chains in your life everything will be broken I said all the chains are totally broken and all the restriction, everything totally destroyed, all the bondage, everything taken away because now I can go in and out and I will find pasture. And look, look at this in verse 10 now. It says in the second part of verse 10, I am come that they might have, what do you have? Life. And that they might have it, how? More abundantly here is jesus christ that is speaking very clearly and pointedly that is the shepherd the true shepherd of the sheep he was sent and therefore authorized by god authorized by the father he entered into the sheepfold by the door having the right and having the key to enter and to him the porter the holy ghost empowers him and opened the hearts of people unto him and he called his own people by name as i've mentioned he called zacchaeus and he called mary and called quite a number of people he called them by name and he has called us one by one and he leads them out he leads and he guides and he teaches he directs us he restrains us he protects us he feeds us because we're sheep of his pasture and it's the door is the door through him the true believer enters into the the presence and fellowship with God. If you're going to enter into the presence of God, look at the door. Look at Jesus Christ. It's by Him, by Jesus Christ, you enter into the presence and fellowship with God. It's by Him you enter the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of God. To be born again and to enter into the kingdom is through the name of Jesus. He forgives your sin. And then all those sins are forgotten. He reconciles you unto God. Not only that, is the door into peace. He is our peace. You, you, you have turmoil in your heart. You have confusion in your heart. And you have kind of a kind of disunity all there. A discomfort there. He is our peace. Not only that, is uh, the door into life and light. Into life and light. You are dead in sins and trespasses. And then you come to Jesus Christ and all of a sudden light, eternal life will come. And then you come to that spiritual life. You are in darkness and now it brings you into the light. He is the door into the refuge and safety for our souls. You see in the Old Testament, if somebody had killed another person unknowingly, unawares, Without any premeditating, premeditating action, that person was killed. The adventure of blood will be running after that person to kill him. And then God provided a way. It's called the city of refuge. That man that had done that thing will quickly run to the city of refuge. And once he's inside there, the adventure of blood cannot catch him again. The same thing with Jesus Christ. Now he is the city of refuge. We have refuge in him. We have safety in him. And all that you have done, whatever it is you have done, you run to Jesus Christ. He is the door. There is salvation for you. I said there is salvation for you. And there is safety for you as well. In Jesus' name is the door into rest and satisfaction. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When there's restlessness in your life, confusion in your life, uncertainty in your life, where will I spend eternity? He says, come, come unto me, he'll give you rest. It's the door into rest and satisfaction. In fact, it's the door into sufficiency and abundance. Everything you need, even from tonight, Christ will provide for you. Because it says, I am come 
that they might have life and that they might have that life more abundantly I, I want you to understand something they say title shepherd 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 that we're reading about now in the new testament you see god himself had even used the title for himself we're coming to genesis chapter 49 genesis chapter 49 i'm reading from verse 24 genesis chapter 49 verse 24 it says but his bow abode in strength and the arms of the hand of his sons were made strong by the hands of the mighty god of jacob look at this from this is the shepherd the stone of israel even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, he will help you. And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above and blessings of the deep that lies under. Blessings will come from every direction upon you. Because he is the shepherd. We're coming to that uh, well known uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 23. Don't forget this. Don't forget this. It's talking about Jesus Christ. It's a shepherd. And the people, I'm sorry for these Pharisees. I'm sorry for these uh, Sadducees that couldn't understand. It's all sort over of there in the Old Testament, Psalm 23. I'm reading from verse 1 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Thank God I can read that for myself. This belongs to me. I said this one belongs to me. I said this one belongs to me. Are you there? Is it yours? Uh huh. The Lord tell me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Your soul will not be lost. I said your soul will not be lost. Uh, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, yea, though I walk, though I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't think you are going to die yet. You are walking through and you'll get through. And you come out wonderful. You come out strong on the other side in Jesus' name. That sickness will not kill you. That infirmity will not kill you. The sorrow and the, the sword and the, and the arrow of the enemy will not kill you. You will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. At night, you will not fear. Tonight, when you go back home to sleep, you will not fear. Tonight, when they are making noise, uh, you know, somewhere that noise is not for you, you will not fear. Because it says, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup, my cup, my cup, it will satisfy your soul. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see it's referring to, it's referring to the, the Lord as the shepherd we're looking at some 80 some 80 and I'm reading from verse 1. You see the language of the shepherd it's not something strange that the Messiah will be the shepherd it's not something strange that the almighty God himself is shepherd it's not something strange is the shepherd of Israel some 80 and we're reading from verse 1 give here O shepherd of Israel uh, that thou that ledest Joseph like a floor, thou that dwellest between the cherubims shine for before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us, turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. You see, he's talking about the Almighty God who led them out of the land of Egypt, and he refers to him as the shepherd. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And we're reading from verse 10, Isaiah chapter 40. And we're reading here from verse uh, 10. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10, uh, still pursuing this understanding of the Old Testament, uh, God being the shepherd, it says, Behold, the Lord 
God will come with strong hand. He'll come to you with strong hand. He shall, his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his walk before him. He shall, he shall, he shall feed his flock like. Tell me out aloud. Like a shepherd, he shall gather the, the lambs with his arm. And then he says, he'll carry, he'll carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are ways young. He is the shepherd and he's going to carry you through in Jesus' name. You will not fall by the wayside. You will not die by the wayside. Your Christian life will not be quenched by the wayside in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. And I'm reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 31. Verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles of Pharaoh, and say, He that gathereth Israel will gather him, and keep him, look at this, as a shepherd doth explore and then it says the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he well I'm going to put my name where that Jacob is if you want to do you can do it yourself for the Lord has redeemed the Lord has redeemed he has redeemed you and he has ransomed you from the hand of him that was stronger than he. And you know, this one is talking about everyone. It's talking about you. You see, but you know, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. Uh, let me show you. Look at verse 20 here. Verse 20. It's Ephraim, my dear son. You see, a pleasant child. Since I spoke against him, I do honestly remember him still. The Lord remembers you. He knows your sorrow. He knows your heartache. Maybe you did something wrong. And then the Lord even spoke against you. He said, even since that time, I do not remember you still. Therefore, my powers are troubled for him. I will surely, surely, surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. Your day of mercy has now come. I'm coming back to John chapter 10. Now the Lord identifies the real shepherd, the true shepherd. We're looking at John chapter 10 and I'm reading from verse 11. It says, I am the good shepherd. Nobody could miss this. He said, he gave it in a parable. He gave, gave it in picture language. He gave it in proclamation. He gave it in teaching. Now he says it very pointedly and expressly and he says, I'm the, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep and then he tells us again in verse 14 I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known of mine what will he do for us well he'll forgive our sins somebody said the amen yeah. he will save our souls another amen yeah. he will sanctify us somebody said amen yeah. look at look at first Peter first Peter first Peter chapter 2 First Peter chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. Who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. He has carried your sins away. Just shift everything to him. Offload everything to him and say, Lord, I know that this is my guilt and this is my confusion and this is my condemnation. And give him your sin because it says, Who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Somebody there is getting healed today. And it says in verse 25, For ye were a sheep going astray, but now are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. I have returned. I said I have returned. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we're reading from verse 20. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. It tells us in verse 20, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep. You see that? His Savior, His shepherd, and that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make 
you, me, me of all people. Can you be perfect? I say, can you be perfect? The blood of Jesus will do it. The cross of Calvary will do it. The promise of God will do it. And this covenant will do it in your life. It will do it in Jesus' name. You know, after you are saved, you come back again to the shepherd. And then every imperfection, by the very mighty power of the blood of the Lamb, he'll take it away in Jesus' name. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will and walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We come to point number three. Now point number three, the decision and the devotedness of the trusting sheep. The, devote, the decision and the devotedness of the trusting sheep. We need to understand that if he is shepherd, then we are sheep. And if he is savior, then we are the saved. If he is the sanctifier, we are the sanctified. If he is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, we are the baptized in the Holy Ghost. Whatever he is, that one works in our lives. And you'll see that this passage talks about the sheep. We're coming to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 2. It says, He that entereth in by, by he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The shepherd of the sheep. That means if you're sheep, you belong to him. Look at verse look at verse 3. It says to him, the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice. That's the characteristic of the sheep. The sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. Thank God he knows my name. I say thank God he knows my name. Because he has written that name in heaven. He has recorded that name in heaven. Do you know he knows your name? Who am I talking about there? He knows your name. And that name is already reaching the book of life in heaven. If you are born again. And then he leadeth them out. Look at verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep. They don't belong to Satan. His own sheep. They don't belong to the world. His own sheep. He goeth before them. And the sheep follow him. And they know his voice. And let's look at this. Jesus, the true shepherd. Is the only Savior and is the only one appointed by the Father and anointed by the Holy Spirit to bring man to God and to godliness and to grace and to glory through the grace of God. All true believers are the sheep in his fold. They are the sheep of the shepherd. What do we learn about the sheep here? Number one is sheep hear his voice. His sheep hear his call. His sheep hear his word. Look at chapter 10, verse 3. To him the potter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. If you're a real sheep, if you belong to the Lord, if you're saved, that's a characteristic you'll hear when the Lord is talking. If you're making a mistake, the shepherd will talk to you and bring you back. You will hear his voice. You'll stop those evil things. If you are discouraged, he'll bring courage unto you and encouragement to you. You will hear his voice. He tells us in John chapter 6, verse 45. John chapter 6, and reading here from verse 45. It tells us in verse 45, it says, it is written in the prophets, and they that shall, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father, cometh unto me. As you have heard, the word enters your heart, it enters your mind, it enters your very being, and that makes you to come unto the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. Number two, the sheep enter through the door. They enter into peace through the door, into salvation through the door. The, the sheep enter into the kingdom through the door. Look at chapter 10 of John verse 9. Chapter 10 of John verse 9. It says in verse 9, I am the door. 
by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. It's only those who enter, they repent, they turn away from their sins, they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall find pasture to enter, to enter. If you have not entered yet, the door is open today. You will enter. He will pardon your sin. He will give you salvation. He will give you eternal life as you enter. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 13. Enter ye in. Don't wait. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Don't say, I, God will push me in. He has told you already. The door is open. Jesus Christ said the door. He invites everyone. And he says, enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in there. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Thank God tonight you'll find that way. You'll find that gate. You'll find that door. And as you enter, whosoever comes to me, I will you know wise cast out. Whatever your past has been, whatever wherever you have gone, wherever you are coming from, you see, you see the door. Just like you enter this, our church a building today, you saw the door there, you entered. Nobody pushed you back. The same thing, the door of the kingdom is open to you. And as you enter tonight, you'll be received in Jesus' name. Now, this, uh, this uh, sheep also believes in the Lord and is saved. Look at chapter 10, verse 26. Chapter 10, verse 26. In verse 26 of chapter 10, look at what it says. It says, but she believed not. He was talking to the Pharisees. He was talking to the unbelievers. He was talking to those who refused to repent. But she believed not because she are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, those who do not believe, they are not part of a sheep. But those who believe, and I'm one of those who believe. I said I'm one of those who believe. Those who believe, they are part of his sheep. What does the Bible say? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 31. Acts, chapter 16, verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. That's how to enter. That's how to become a sheep in the fold of Christ. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe. That's the word. And shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Give me a good amen. Amen. Uh, let's, let's look at that verse again. Read it like this. That if I shall confess with my mouth, I, I, yourself there, this is how to get saved. And this is how to get to the kingdom. If I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, that Jesus is my Lord, and shall believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation is so near just as near as you confess it. As near as you turn away from your sin. As near as you take him to be your savior. Is your savior tonight in Jesus name. Uh, come back to John chapter 10. Uh, there's something about the sheep here that we need to look at. It says they hear not the stranger. They follow not the stranger. In fact, it says, they flee. They run away from the stranger. If you say you are saved, you will not go on and be hearing things that those Pharisees again that they are saying, that those false prophets are saying. You will not keep their books. You will not keep their tapes. You will not keep, you know, your connection with them. Because now you are sheep of the Lord Jesus. You cannot belong to the light and darkness at the same time. You cannot belong to Christ and Satan at the same time. You cannot belong to the church and the cult at the same time. The hear not look at this chapter uh, chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 5. Chapter 10 verse 5 John. And a stranger will they not follow. You will not follow a stranger anymore. 
but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers it is a strange voice a strange doctrine a strange appearance a strange language a strange behavior and you'll not follow that anymore look at verse 8 it says all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers look at this but the sheep did not hear them the sheep did not listen to them if you're a real sheep in the fold you'll not have any interest of listening to those who are strange and to those who are evil look at hebrews 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 chapter 13 we're reading from verses 8 and 9 hebrews chapter 13 verses 8 and 9 jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever somebody shout amen be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. If you know that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever, He's still our Savior. He's still our Shepherd. He's still our substitute. He's still the final sacrifice. There's no animal sacrifice anymore. And there's no other thing. There's no incense anymore. All those things are gone. That's why it now says, but uh, be not carried away. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied with them. You will not follow them anymore. But now you follow the true shepherd. Come back to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm reading here from verse 4. John chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 4. It tells us in verse 4, John chapter 10, it says, And when he put it forth his own, his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. And the sheep, what do they do? They follow him, for they know his voice. Jesus is the only one you are going to follow from today. Your character will follow his character. Your language will follow his language. Your attitude will follow his attitude. Anything you do, anywhere you go, you'll follow the Lord in Jesus' name. First Peter, first Peter, first Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter, chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 21. It tells us in verse 21, For ye even were on here unto, were ye called, because... Christ has suffered for us, he suffered for you. I said he suffered for you. To take your punishment away, to take your curse away, to take your calamity away, thank God you are free. Now, he says, leaving us an example that ye should, what's that? Yeah, ye should, tell me aloud, that ye should follow his steps. Now we are following the Lord. And you'll follow him till the very end in Jesus' name. Uh, that's the characteristic of those who get to heaven. We're looking at Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Revelation chapter 14. What do you mean from verse 4? It says in verse 4, These are they which are not defiled with women. Every defilement will get out of your life. The Lord will cleanse you. The blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. For they are virgins. These are they that follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Those are the sheep. And thank God, I'm a sheep in his fold. I said, I'm one of the sheep in his fold. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Come back to chapter 10 of John. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. Stop there for a moment. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the penalty of death is taken away from your life. Do you remember, have you heard before, the soul that sinneth, it shall 
die but you come to jesus christ you have been a sinner before all have seen and come short of the glory of god but all those sins you committed when you come to christ he gives you life because he says i am come that they might have life and then you say that they might have it more abundantly look at john chapter 20 verse 31 john chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 31. It tells us in verse 31 of John chapter 20. It says, These things, uh, these things uh, are written that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have, what do you have? Life through his name. Thank God, as you believe, you have that life in Jesus' name. Come back to John chapter 10. And I'm reading that second part of chapter 10 again. Because it's talking about Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, our sufficiency. And Jesus, our shepherd. It says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. You have left that thief. You are no more with him. He cannot reach you. You don't belong to him. And all his works in your life, in the past, tonight, even forever, they are cancelled in Jesus' name. Now the shepherd is talking. He says, I am come that they might have, number one, life, that's salvation. Life, that's forgiveness. Life, that's eternal life. Life, that's justification. Life, that's your name entering the book of life. Death is cancelled. Now you have life. But then uh, there's something more. I say there's something more. I say there's something more. Church, I say there's something more. He said that they might have it more abundantly. More abundantly. Everything coming from the abundance of the grace of God is available for you salvation is available that's life sanctification is available that's abundant life healing is available that's abundant life joy unspeakable is available that's abundant life victory is available that's abundant life righteousness is available the replication the duplicate of the life of jesus being transferred into your life you will never be the same again you will not go as you came in Jesus' name. And hey, look at this. Look at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. You will live that abundant life. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And now Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. If you had this before, hear it again. If you have not had this before, open your ears, open your mind, and open your heart. Look at this in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now, what does that mean? Now, now at this very time, what is now? Church, you can't talk. I say, what is now? Your blessing is now. Life is now. Forgiveness is now. Salvation is now. Sanctification is now. Power is now. Victory is now. Healing, when is it? Deliverance, when is it? Joy, when is it? Now unto him that is able, our God is able. Our shepherd is able. See, just in chapter 9, he opened the eyes of the blind. He will open your blind eyes. In chapter 5, he made that man to rise up and walk. You rise up and walk. Anything that is deformed in your life, the Lord is going to come tonight. He's going to rectify everything in Jesus' name. Because our Savior is able. Our sanctifier is able. Our shepherd is able. I said our shepherd is able. He says now unto him that is able to do exceeding. Tell me the next word. Tell me out aloud. 
abundantly above, abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us. That power is going to work in your heart right now. He will roll all those sins away, all the guilt, he roll everything away. All the, all the evil sin and the, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this. All that weakness is rolled away tonight in Jesus' name. Because now the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now he restoreth my soul. And yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head and then my cup, my cup, my cup runneth over. Surely now, you're sitting down. Surely now, are you sitting down? Surely now, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me how long all the days of my life where will i dwell where will you dwell and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever open your mouth and invite him a savior open your mouth and invite him a sanctifier open your mouth and invite him he's your shepherd all your needs are met all your problems are solved Give your life to Jesus Christ and you have that eternal life and you have that abundant life. It is yours today, now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that walketh in us. That power is working in your life today.